exercise is over. Anyway, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe. It is and always will be absolutely free. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be asking this question. Can you grow bananas here in the UK? Well, it all depends what you mean. If you mean, can you grow uh, edible fruit in bananas, the Musa Acuminata Dwarf Cavendish, um, then unless you have a commercial greenhouse with additional heating and lighting, then you can't. But if you do have one of those, then yes, you can. You can literally grow any plant in one of those. Um, but if you're asking me, are there banana plants that I can grow outside all year round and are perfectly hardy and can withstand our winters? Well, there is one, and there's two other banana likeys that you could consider. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you three plants to look at. Every single one of them has received the Award of Garden Merit from the Royal Horticultural Society. So, if you like any of these, you've, you've picked yourself an absolute stormer. Well, okay then, let's not beat around the bush. We're all very busy people, so let me start off with the one that I know is the one that you're gonna be looking for, and is this one here. Now, I appreciate it doesn't look particularly good at the moment, but then it is still February, but with the magic of YouTube, I can transport you back to the summer where this plant was looking absolutely amazing. So this is the absolutely wonderful, hardy Japanese banana, botanical name, Musa. Bear stew. It grows to about four meters tall and it is it's what people call root hardy. Now if we protect the stems, remove the uh, the big paddle shaped leaves over the winter period and give it a good wrapping up then this will tolerate very low temperatures. The roots themselves will tolerate temperatures down to minus 12 Celsius um, if the pseudo stems uh, do indeed die back. But these pseudo stems give them a little bit of protection and these will go down to about minus seven, minus eight degrees, no problem at all. Once it establishes, then yes, it will even produce a flower for you and that flower will indeed produce banana shaped fruit. But the trouble is they are not edible. And I'll tell you why, because those fruits are absolutely chock full of bullet-like uh, seeds. So if you try and eat one of those, um, unless you've got teeth like Jaws, the villain on James Bond, then uh, you're going to damage yours, especially if you are a certain age. So, um, fruiting, okay, look, you could sort of peel it apart a bit and sort of lick a little bit of uh, uh, yellow stuff off of it and it could be a bit banana -y. But give up on that one as an idea. Just buy your bananas in the supermarket. Anyway, what is my next contestant? Hmm. So, option number three is the rather unusual Musella Lesio Carpa, commonly known as the Golden Lotus Banana. It's from China, it's from the Sichuan province, and um, it's different, it's different. But uh, if you don't like it, don't worry, because uh, choice number three is, uh, you're gonna like that one. That's very, very good. Anyway, Musella Lesio Carpa is a little bit unusual. It doesn't form a pseudo stem like you expect on your regular bananas. And it has this absolutely wonderful, if not bizarre, um, yellow, golden even, uh, flowering stem. Absolutely wonderful. Usually it's produced in the second year of it being established. Um, but the problem is it's hardiness. So uh, go on growing here. Let's have a look and see how it's coped with this year's winter. Temperatures went down to minus five if you're interested. Celsius, not Fahrenheit, that's weird. Right, so under here and under all of this, we've got um, a dry mulch of bark chips here. We've got a little bit of uh, frost protection. Ooh, look at that, look at that, look at that. That is still pretty solid. Now, we did have this protected last year, not as much protection as we have done this year, but last year, this little pseudo stem, I know it's only small, uh, that died back to ground level, but it did regrow from the base. But look at that, this year, that looks good, and that feels really tough. So I would say that's a success. Now, the problem you'll find with a lot of the more tender, more subtropical plants, they tend to need a little helping hand. They need a couple of mild winters in order to establish, because they tend to perform better over winter 
once they're bigger than when they do when they're smaller. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a case for a lot of plants. So, Medella Lazocarpa, it's a little bit special. They're difficult to find, but you might be able to pick one up online. And yes, it will take two, probably three years to, uh, to be big enough before it flowers, but you will need to give it a helping hand um, to protect it over the winters if you want to try and keep it going for that long. Anyway, that's number two. What about number three? Now my third choice, I know I said third choice for the second choice, but I can't help it, I, I am getting old. My genuine third choice, not my pretend third choice, is the Enset ventricosum morellii, commonly known as the Abyssinian banana, a native to Ethiopia. I don't know why they've given it the wrong common name, but there you have it. It's um, it's a fantastic specimen, not a true banana. It doesn't produce edible fruits, although it is edible because the, uh, the roots and the base of the plant can be cooked up and eaten as a decent kind of potato starchy like uh, kind of a crop um, but you can grow it here in the UK and I have grown and overwintered it here in the UK and if we look carefully under one of those bags we got one let's go and have a look see how it's coped again with the minus five degrees Celsius so I've got this sort of like rain cover and also give it a bit of uh, cold protection underneath here once again we've got um, a, uh, a, a dry mulch of bark chips and oh, oh, oh yes look. so we've got this place on here this is feeling really tough now if it's, this doesn't survive the winters it's too cold this just turns to mush but again look at that look at that oh yes really pleased so I fully expect that to reshoot out as soon as the uh, the weathers and the temperatures start to pick up so proof if proof were needed that if you give an Abyssinian banana a certain amount of winter protection it will survive our cold freezing temperatures um, and I've had these I've had these grown three four years in a row without bother at all um, it could have been longer said we move house fairly regularly and uh, we left that one behind but um, again survive this winter minus five degrees Celsius um, can grow up to about six meters tall though the largest one I've seen um, in the flesh was that Wisley in their greenhouse, but they don't need to be in a greenhouse. If you live on the Marder regions of the UK, the south coast, south coast of Ireland, uh, particularly the Silly Isles, I'm sure they're just overflowing with those, then it's a, it's a really good choice, really unusual, massive, massive leaves. And you can get both the Morellion, which is the, uh, like the, the burgundy red form or the green form, um, both really, really good. Um, probably, probably, I don't know, probably the red form is going to be a little bit tougher. Um, but saying that, if you've got any great ideas or any extra information that you'd like to add to this video, then we would love to hear from you. Just put those uh, thoughts in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.